Sailrite sells a winch cover kit. In this video, we're going to show you how to construct that kit uh, all the way from the beginning to the end. Hi, I'm Eric Grant. Today we're going to be building a winch cover. It's pretty easy to do, and we're going to show you exactly the steps that are involved and the process for this. All right, so we've uh, purchased a winch for this demonstration from Sailor Man just down the street here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, what you need to do first is measure the diameter. Uh, so take your tape measure and measure obviously the uh, widest part of the winch and measure across there. This is five and an eighth. So from here to here, that's five and an eighth. If you remember your high school education, uh, you want to multiply uh, that times pi, which is 3.14. So 5.125 is uh, five and an eighth times 3.14 equals 16.09. All right, so we have measured the diameter. Now we have the circumference. We also want to get the height of the winch. So measure the height right up to the, to the tallest point of the winch. I'm going to put the tape measure back here because I can't see it otherwise. It's five and a half inches. So you measure the height of the winch as well. That determines that uh, rectangle that we're going to use next, the height and the circumference. All right, we'll take that circumference and we'll add one inch. One inch will be used for half inch seam allowances on both edges. So we add one inch to that uh, circumference length here. We mark our fabric and uh, then we'll also take the, uh, the height and we'll add one inch. And that makes the height of this uh, 6.5 inches or six and a half inches. Okay, so circumference plus one inch and height plus one inch. Then we'll take our straight edge and I'll, we'll mark a line across that on both those measurements. Now, Sailrite recommends the use of a hot knife. Uh, we're going to use a professional hot knife. That seals the edge. Uh, you'll be turning this uh, winch cover inside and out quite often to put it on the winch, and uh, those raw edges will eventually unravel. So the use of a hot knife is highly recommended. Uh, this one cuts very quickly. It uh, heats up in about three seconds and cools down in about a minute and uh, does a superb job of cutting uh, Sumbrella and synthetics. There's the first cut, now on for the second cut. Okay. So the circumference plus one inch and the height plus one inch. Those are for seam allowance. All right, we've got that one done. Now we need a small uh, rectangle. This small rectangle will be used for the, uh, uh, for the choker uh, that's used inside of the uh, winch cover with this umbrella in it. We want it the same uh, length as that uh, large square piece there, but we want half the height of this. So half the height here. Six and a half inches divided by uh, two would be uh, 3.25 inches, so three and a quarter inches. And then we mark it and move on. All right, we take our straight edge and mark the lines on this, and we'll cut it out again with the hot knife, as we did earlier. That seals the edges. Now, we want to add a, uh, a half inch uh, hem on the larger rectangle. So we'll measure up a half inch, we'll uh, take our straight edge. Now this is a little trick that uh, I've learned, just take a screwdriver, fairly blunt object, and uh, kind of score that material. You don't want to push, push too hard, you could break the fibers, but if you do it lightly, watch how nicely it folds. It folds right on that score. So this makes it quite easy to uh, make a half inch hem. Now I'm going to use the uh, 129. It wouldn't be a Sailrite video unless I use 129. And now you can't use it for the next panel, but you can for this one. This pre-bases the panel together, and you leave that glue in there while you're sewing, and nothing moves on you while you're sewing. So uh, we love uh, part number 129, which is the seam stick for umbrella or for canvas, is what we say. I call it part 129. Okay, now we take that over to our sewing machine. We want to sew real close to that uh, fold. Um, so we're uh, probably about an eighth inch off from that fold. We'll do a bar tack and lock that stitch in place just basically by reversing the machine. And we'll sew all the way down the length. And we'll do a reverse there as well to lock that stitch in place. Okay, 
Once that's done, we're going to use that uh, um, swing gauge fence uh, for the, the second stitch. That keeps the stitch nice and straight. If you don't have this, you can put more masking tape down or you can just use one of the inner feet as a guide along that, uh, uh, that edge of the fabric. And we're going to put this hem right inside that uh, raw edge. Okay, we do a bar tack here as well sew down the length of that large rectangle. Okay, that would complete this large rectangle as far as uh, the hem goes. Now we go over to the uh, smaller rectangle and uh, we'll mark that one a three-quarter of a hem. Okay, it's not a half inch, we're going to do three-quarter inch hem here. And we're going to crease it the same way we did with the uh, previous panel with a straight edge and that screwdriver to create a nice score in the material. Don't push too hard because you can actually cut the fabric, uh, the fibers of the fabric. Just enough to make it fold nicely. Now we cannot use double sided tape in this panel because we're going to be inserting uh, a length of shock cord in this. Uh, in the sleeve that it creates. And we're going to fold, or we're not going to sew along the fold, we're going to sew along that raw edge. Okay, so there's no double sided tape on this one. We'll use that fence as a guide again because it makes the sewing a lot faster and a lot more accurate. We'll do a bar tack here to lock our stitch in place and continue on down the length of that uh, small rectangle. Here we are at the end. And now we'll insert the shock cord into that uh, sleeve. We've left about two inches extra on each end. That's important for pulling the uh, shock cord out in your, uh, one of the next steps. Not the next step, but one of the steps in the future. So feed it all the way in there. And if you have to, you can take a coat hanger and uh, it helps to feed it in nice. All right, once it's in place, then we'll uh, make sure that the uh, the uh, um, seam is on the outside and we'll sew that together up to that uh, sleeve. We will stop at the sleeve. We don't want to sew past it. We'll just sew up to the sleeve and then we want to sew a half inch in. This is very important that you uh, measure that a half inch otherwise it won't fit your winch well. Okay, So we're a half inch in and we just sew a straight stitch with the reverse at the beginning and reverse at the end to lock that stitch in place. And stop before you get to the uh, sleeve. All right, there we go. Now we'll do the same procedure for the larger rectangle. Notice we didn't sew over the sleeve. The larger rectangle will sew right into that hem. So we'll sew from end to end. And you want to make sure, again, that you sew a half inch in to make it fit appropriately on your winch. We'll do a reverse here at the beginning and a reverse over top of that hem to lock that stitch in place. here. All right, that's it. Let's turn our attention now to the uh, top uh, cover, uh, the round circular cover. There are two ways to do this. We're, first, we're going to show uh, the way without uh, the compass. And to do that, just simply fold the material in half and use a hard object to crease it. You can use an iron, but don't plug it in. And then crease it a second time, as shown here. Uh, the second way with a compass is easier. We'll show that here shortly. So you choose which way you'd like. If you have a compass, use it. Okay. When you're done with that, we'll take the, uh, the radius, which is from the center of that uh, winch, and we'll add a half inch to the radius. Okay, So from the radius, we want that measurement, and we add a half inch to it. And we'll mark uh, from the thickest point of that fold, which is that one corner with four layers of fabric, uh, the radius plus a half inch. Now, what we're doing here is we're just using a straight pin, and we uh, uh, took a piece of string and tied a pencil on it, and we, uh, uh, you can use a compass as well, but in lieu of a, cus a compass, you can do it this way, and just draw a nice arc on there. When we're done, we should have a fairly beautiful circle. It won't be perfect, but it'll be stinking close. And again, I'm going to use a hot knife here, and we've, uh, we're using this on top of a piece of glass, which we did earlier, too. I don't think I explained that, but... Uh, we definitely have a piece of glass under there to keep from damaging this table. Otherwise, it would damage this table we're working on. 
and uh, that works nicely. This is four layers of Sunbrella and this uh, professional hot knife works quite well in cutting that material. The beautiful thing, you can also use scissors here, but uh, the beautiful thing of using a hot knife is that uh, it seals that edge. Okay, we're not going to show it here, but this circle, uh, what I recommend is you put a guiding line a half inch in from the edge of this circle. Uh, we're going to show that next with the compass. So that's how to do it without a compass. Here's how to do it with a compass. Again, find the measurement, add the half inch onto it, and then draw your circle around uh, the fabric. Make sure you have enough fabric that you can make a circle. Now we're going to add a, 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 a guiding line for when we're going to be sewing this top onto the winch cover a half inch in from the edge. And uh, we find those two positions. The reason I'm doing it on both sides is because I didn't mark the center so I have to find the center again and I want to make sure it's exactly in the center. So I'm. If I, what you should do is uh, mark the center before you lift up this compass. There's the center position and now all we'll do is we'll um, move it into the half inch and put a line right there half inch in from that other line and that will be our guiding line for sewing this uh, circle onto the winch the compass is a lot easier to use so if you have one use that if not then do it the previous way we showed it earlier putting on this line half inch in is a phenomenal way to uh, sew this uh, top onto your winch cover and we definitely recommend doing that if, especially if you've never done a winch cover and now what we'll do is we'll fold this assembly in half as we did the other one and whether you do it with the compass or without the compass mark those four corners the west east south and north with a pencil uh, and we'll we'll be stapling those onto the uh, winch cover and that way if the circumference of this is not exactly right you can work out any imperfections okay so mark it with a pencil now we're also going to cut little notches uh, relief notches into this uh, uh, top and you don't want to cut all the way into that half inch mark so stop short of that half inch mark otherwise you'll see it and cut about every uh, inch or more this definitely aids in the sewing process and making this come out beautiful now we take that uh, larger rectangle and uh, the smaller rectangle goes on the outside. Now you need to make sure that the seams are uh, all facing out. Uh, and then you match up the raw edges here. Okay. And uh, we'll kind of uh, splay that uh, uh, hem open and stuff it right along that uh, hem seam line that we have there so it lays nice and flat. Now we'll actually uh, pre-staple this uh, assembly together with a stapler to make sure it doesn't move before we even start uh, contemplating putting the uh, round uh, cover section on. That way it makes it easier for us to uh, uh, negotiate that uh, round um, top on this assembly. So we pre-staple this in place and we'll pull those staples out obviously before we're finished with the entire project. So match it up there and staple it so those edges are exactly even go all around the perimeter making sure that you're not pulling one tighter than the other but get their flush like they we're showing here. Continue around the entire perimeter doing this. Here we are finishing it up. Now take this assembly and do the same thing that you did with the round top. Fold it and create marks at the north, east, west and south positions. Now this mark over here isn't necessary because it's uh, right where the fold is so you don't need to mark it there uh, but on all uh, the three sides definitely put pencil marks on the inside that way we can match up that round top with each one of those four uh, edges. Okay so we've got that now we'll take our round top that we've marked previously and we've already have the relief uh, notches cut about every inch or more and we'll match that up to the northeast southwest marks that we did and put a staple at each one of those positions. Now make sure that the edges are exactly even and the more time you spend doing this the uh, more beautiful your winch cover will, will uh, come out. So spend your, ti spend ti your time making this uh, assembly uh, nice and neat and make sure those edges are even and uh, make sure there are no wrinkles in it when you're doing it. So again, we're just stapling the four corners first. If, the, if you can call it a corner, it's not really that. The four points that we marked with a pencil. And if you have not cut this cover exactly right, 
uh, by doing it this way, uh, you can uh, take out any small discrepancies. Uh, if there are large discrepancies, you're probably going to need to go back to the drawing board and redo your top. If they are fairly small, you'll find that doing it this way will uh, uh, distribute the discrepancies around, amongst the entire circumference of that top. Now we're just going to put staples uh, around about the top to make sure that it lays nice and flat. And we'll put those staples in very close to the half inch mark that we marked uh, with a pencil. Uh, if you mark them out, if you have the staples out towards the edge, you'll find that it, it doesn't really stay together when you're sewing. So put those staples in as close as possible to that uh, pencil line, but not on top. We don't necessarily want to be sewing over our staples if we can avoid it. So I put them about a sixteenth of an inch away approximately. Here we are with it stapled all around the perimeter, and you notice I worked out most of the uh, bumps, and that's very important as well. And you can see that pencil line. Now take it over to your sewing machine. Now in this sewing machine what I've done is I've, t I've put in a roping zipper foot uh, uh, left. Uh, in doing this I don't have a foot on the right side of that uh, machine. I have the assembly in towards the throat of the machine. This is an alter feed machine and uh, what I find that it's a little bit easier to do a winch cover from the throat of the machine rather than on the other side because of that the foot makes an L and that bracket sometimes gets in the way when you're uh, trying to rotate this winch cover around. So again, I've taken the uh, uh, roping zipper foot left, put it in the machine, and I've moved my needle all the way to that uh, right position. You can move the needle right, left, and center. I've moved it all the way to the right. And I'm sewing right on top of that pencil line. This is the, uh, the, what's advantageous about that line. There's no guesswork involved in here. You just keep that needle going, if you can see from the tail end back there, uh, uh, the, the thread, the stitching, is right on top of that line. This will make the winch cover come out perfect. And that's why I really recommend putting in that uh, half inch line on the top of this round uh, uh, circle. Take your time here. Again, the staples are fairly close to that uh, uh, pencil line, but not right on top, so I'm sewing uh, just slightly over to the uh, uh, to the right of those staples and continue sewing around the entire perimeter. All right now we're coming to the starting point where we started stitching and you just want to sew over that uh, point and then do a bar tack. In other words reverse the machine to lock the stitch in place and you should be pretty much done with all your sewing. We'll take this assembly out of the sewing machine now that we have that reverse stitch in place and take a look at it up close. You'll notice that the uh, stitch is right on top of that pencil line. And that made it come out very nice and round. Now remember to remove all these staples. This will take some time, but definitely remove the staples so they do not rust around the entire uh, winch cover. Let's concentrate now on the elastic. You want to pull the, some of this elastic out roughly to about half the diameter of your winch cover. Uh, so this will create a choker so when the winch cover is installed it won't uh, blow off. Then uh, take it over to the sewing machine and uh, sew over it with a straight stitch or a zigzag and then make sure you reverse a few times as you're sewing. If your sewing machine can't handle this, this is an alter feed machine and I apologize for my hand getting in the way, I'm just going down with the reverse lever. You may want to do this by hand with a needle and thread, uh, but the alter feed can definitely handle it. Uh, then we'll just take that uh, uh, elastic and uh, we'll even it out amongst the uh, uh, entire perimeter of that sleeve. So just kind of even it all out. And then take a pair of scissors and chop off that extra length in the shock cord. Voila. And you are done. This is what the uh, cover looks like and you'll see that choker on the inside there. That's what fits around that uh, winch and holds it in place. Here's how you put it on. You turn it inside out. You, s you slide that shock cord or the choker over the winch and then just simply uh, take the outer cover and go continue putting it on as you would say a snow cap for your head in the winter time. We don't have that problem here in Florida but uh, some people in the north do so <laughs> put it on as you would a stocking cap and there you are. There's the winch cover. Came out pretty nice. Now to take it off it's basically just turning it inside out again. And then you just uh, pull that uh, shock cord off. 
I hope you enjoy making these. I think they're a lot of fun, especially after you master putting on that uh, round top. Thanks again for watching. I'm Eric Grant.